we've gone in and shown just how easy it is to set up a SharePoint site, customize the way it looks, and then add in users. Now, let me show you how easy it is to customize your site. And we're going to do so using WebPart Technologies. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's click on Edit Page under Site Actions. And then you'll see two different WebPart zones, one titled Left and one titled Right. Within each of them, there are currently two web parts, the picture, the links, the calendar, and the announcements. Let's go ahead and add in two new web parts. I'm going to click on Add a New Web Part, and we'll put them in the left-hand side. You can see that there's a variety of web parts to choose from. In fact, there is no theoretical limit to the number of web parts available to you. That's because you can customize one or have one or someone customize one for you and enables you to do a number of different things. For example, a lot of large companies have very structured back-end applications such as uh, an inventory management system. However, you'll find that most workers don't want to access information through that proprietary interface. They like to do so through Office, so they can do it to their SharePoint site, or in some cases you connect it to Outlook and you're able to enter in sales information directly into Outlook. Really incredible. However, for right now, let's choose two basic web parts, Tasks and Team Discussion, so we can really focus on the communication and collaboration element. Once I click Add, you'll see they're added to the left web part zone that we have on our site. And now, let's go ahead and add some content into our web parts. Let's add a new task. I'm going to click on Add New Task. You'll see that this is just like the task you're used to in Outlook. For right now, I'm going to do two things. One, assign a task to me, and then we're going to assign one to Brian. For me, let's create a new task and we'll say hire new field representative. This is a high priority task. We're going to assign it to myself. Before I use the address book feature, now I'm going to enter in my alias and use the people check feature which auto completes it for me. I could also do control K. And then I'll give myself two weeks to complete this task. Click OK and that task is now out there. You can see that I've gone in and added a few more tasks. Let's take a look at them. We're going to click on the tasks web part and then we'll be taken to the task page. And you can see here a list of all the tasks I'm able to see. In this case, there's five for me, Lewis, and one for Brian. If you take a look at the view drop down in the right hand corner, you can apply additional filtering. For example, Let's only take a look at tasks assigned to me. So we're going to click My Tasks. And now you'll see a list of tasks only assigned to me. However, in its current state, this view might not be optimal. So let's create a new view. And I'll do so by going to Settings and then Create View. Currently, we're using a standard view, which is essentially just a list of the items. However, I want to show you the Gantt view. And if you're familiar with project management, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you're not, I'll show you in just a second. I just have to configure a few options. And I'll just go with the basics right now. But you can see from all of the different areas where you can apply customization just how much you can make this look exactly the way you want. And now, once I click OK, we're taken to the Gantt view, and you'll see just how stunning it is. Just by looking at it, you can visually see your tasks. Now, I'd like to show you two important elements of security. 
and the first is versioning. To set this up, we're going to choose the settings drop down and then choose list settings. And then we'll click on versioning settings. And here we can do two things. We can set it up so that every time a change is made, in this case to a task, it's saved as a new version and we keep an infinite number of them. Or we could set it up to just keep the past two or three, five, whatever number you decide. That would be relevant if you were talking about AutoCAD files or a large proposal document. For right now, let's go ahead and do this. We'll click OK. Now I'll navigate back to the task web part and make a change to one of the tasks. Let's say that the, the presentation has now been completed. Let's click on this, edit the item, and we're going to say that it's now complete. I'm going to click OK. Then I'm taken back to the task web part. And if I go to this drop down for that particular task and click on version history, you can see that today that task changed to completed. Now, the other element of security that's very important. And that's what I call clicky fingers. Let's say, for example, someone was browsing through this, they saw that the task changed, so saved as new version, they wanted to go ahead and delete that old version. But then once they do, they immediately realize that they don't want to delete it. And of course, they would only be able to if they had the security rights to. But let's say they did. We've got a problem. However, it can be easily fixed. Let's go back to the task web part and then click on the recycle bin in the bottom left hand corner and you can see that just like with your desktop you can click and restore items that you deleted and now let me show you one additional layer of security and that's the ability to overwrite security access rights at an individual document level so for example Let's choose Hire New Field Representative. For many obvious reasons, we probably don't want the sales force to be able to see this. Perhaps they'll think that their job is on the line, which even in the case that it is, we don't want them to know. Or perhaps they're going to be uh, emailing us, telling us about friends and colleagues they know that would be a great fit for the position. We probably don't want to deal with either situation. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on manage permissions and then we're going in and we're overriding the permissions at this document level so we're going to click on edit permissions and then we're going to select the Las Vegas sales force go to actions and click on remove user permissions and you'll see that when I click on tasks in the breadcrumb because I'm logged in as Bluest, I am still able to see that task you can see it right here. However, let me log in as Brian and show you how this is different. I'm logging in as Brian and then I'll be taken to the task page. And you can see that for Brian, that task that is titled Hire a New Field Representative is not even visible. Now, let's take a look at a few other different web parts. I've gone in and I've added a shared document web part. Let's start off by taking a look at that. You'll see that in this current state, there are no uploaded documents. However, we select the Upload Document drop-down and choose Upload Multiple Documents. You'll see just how easy it is to upload documents to the site. For example, let's select these two documents, click OK, and then upload them to our site. Now, let me show you how the document library works. 
Let's say we want to make edits to one of the documents. We click on it, Excel will open up in this case. And then let's make a pretty basic change. Let's just change the color to orange because this will be a really obvious change. And then when I close out, it'll ask me if I want to save it back to the SharePoint site. And now, when I click on that document and open it up, you can see that it's orange.